the patient with a seizure disorder. Introduction. A seizure is a proximal event resulting from abnormal brain activity. A seizure may involve loss of consciousness or awareness or impaired awareness with or without convulsive movements or spasms. Epilepsy is a term to describe a group of functional disorders of the brain characterized by recurrent seizures. Seizures are a symptom of epilepsy. The patient's medical history may reveal susceptibility to seizures. A complete evaluation is required prior to treatment. Treatment modalities of epilepsy and a seizure itself may affect the oral tissues as well as dental and dental hygiene treatment. Dental personnel need to be aware of the issues associated with seizures, know how to evaluate the patient and how to apply emergency measures in and out of the dental office or clinic. Care of the oral cavity is necessary due to its relationship to overall health and to oral accidents that may occur during a seizure. All patients should consult their physicians regarding exercise and lifestyle. Occupation and lifestyle may be limited for patients who have recurrent seizures. A person susceptible to seizures cannot participate in activities that may participate a seizure such as driving or operating machinery. Such limitations may lead to depression. According to the Centers for Disease Control, there are approximately 3.4 million adults and 470,000 children in the United States who have recurrent seizures associated with epilepsy. The World Health Organization estimates more than 50 million people worldwide have epilepsy. New cases are most commonly found in children and in older adults. Seizures. Seizure, seizure definition. An epileptic seizure is a transient occurrence of signs and symptoms due to abnormal neuronal activity in the brain. Epilepsy is a disease of the brain and a seizure is a symptom of the disease. Onset defines where the seizure begins in the brain. Unknown onset seizures means the beginning of the seizure was unknown or was not witnessed by another person. Patient may have impaired awareness or be fully aware of their surroundings. Special care must be taken with impaired awareness seizures relating to the safety of the patient. Seizures are generally unprovoked and involuntary, but triggers may precipitate an epileptic seizure. A seizure begins when a, with an abrupt onset of symptoms that may be a motor, sensory, cognitive, or emotional nature, depending on which cells or parts of the brain is involved. Non-movement during a seizure is considered non-motor. A seizure progresses. As a seizure progresses, it may or may not cause loss of consciousness or awareness. Tonic or and or clonic movements, incontinence, saliva, saliva foaming, and tongue biting. Length of a seizure is uncontrollable. Other terms, convulsion, fit, spell, or ictus. Classification of seizures. The syndrome associated with the seizures are complex. Diagnosis of seizures. Clinical signs and symptoms. A patient with a complex seizure disorder may exhibit a trance-like state with confusion that can last for a few minutes to hours. Consciousness is impaired to varying degrees. Patient may manifest purposeless movements or actions followed by confusion, incoherent speech, ill humor, unpleasant temper, does not remember what happened during the attack. The history. Medical history is the first step in the diagnosis of epilepsy seizures. Documentation of initial onset and preliminary factors that led up to the seizure should be noted. Electroencephalography, EEG, EEG shows patterns of normal and abnormal brain activity. The test can reveal showing in rhythm due to trauma, stroke, brain tumor, or seizures. The type and symptoms. Severity, age-related onset, cause, inherited and genetic, EEG pattern and part of the brain involved. The types of seizures. Seizures have three basic types, generalized, focalized, and those of unknown onset. The type depends on where and how the seizure begins in the brain. Generalized onset affects both sides of the brain. Examples are tonic-clonic, absence, or atonic seizures. Focal onset begins in one area of group of the cells of the brain. Examples are focal onset aware and focal onset impaired awareness. Generalized onset seizures, motor category, affecting both sides of the brain at the same time. Tonic clonic known as convulsive or grand mal seizures. Muscles of the chest and pharynx may contract at the same time, forcing air out and sound known as the epileptic cry. Loss of consciousness or awareness is, is sudden and complete. The patient becomes stiff and falls or may slide out of the dental chair.
Musculature contraction. With tonic phase, body becomes rigid. With clonic phase, there is intermittent muscular contraction and relaxation. A tonic refers to weakened muscles. Skin color turns pale to bluish. Breathing is shallow or stops briefly. Possible loss of bladder and rarely bowel control. Tongue may be bitten. Incidents usually last one to three minutes. Respiration returns. Saliva, which previously could not be swallowed, may mix with air and appears foamy. Patient begins to recover, may be confused, tired, complain of muscle soreness or injury, falls into a deep sleep. Phases of seizures are aura, ictus, and post-ictal. Seizures may contain continue without recovery and progress to status epileptus, meaning lasting more than five minutes or experiencing two seizures within a five-minute period. Non-motor or absence seizure, previously known as petite mal. Loss of consciousness or awareness begins and ends abruptly in about five to 30 seconds, most common in children, and may lead to learning difficulties if not identified. Patient has a blank stare, usually does not fall, posture becomes fixed, may drop whatever is being held, may become pale. Myoclonus may occur. Patient may have rhythmic twitching of the eyelids, eyebrows, head, or chewing movements. Attack ends as abruptly as it begins. Patient quickly returns to full awareness, resumes activities, unaware of what even occurred. Focal onset seizures. Focal seizures start with one group of cells in one part of the brain. Focal onset aware means patient is aware during the seizure. Focal onset impaired awareness means the patient is confused. Unknown onset seizures. Start of a seizure is unknown. Seizure has not been witnessed. Unclassified seizures may be classified once additional information has been brought to the neurologist's attention. The etiology. In addition to epilepsy, seizures can be a symptom of many different conditions. The causes can be genetic, structural, metabolic, or unknown. Genetic predisposition to seizures or to other neurologic abnormalities for which the seizure may be a symptom. Structural or metabolic. Seizures can arise during many neurologic and non-neurologic medical conditions such as congenital conditions such as maternal infection, rubella, toxemia of pregnancy maternal drug use, or perinatal injuries, brain tumor, cerebrovascular disease, stroke, trauma, head injury, infections such as meningitis, encephalitis, opportunistic infections of human immunodeficiency virus, degenerative brain disease, metabolic and toxic disorders including lead exposure, alcoholism, and other drug addictions. Seizures are common during alcohol and or drug withdrawal. Complications of cancer. Unknown cause. The onset and cause of the epileptic seizure are unknown. A neurologic examination may diagnose the reason. The prognosis. Prognosis for seizure control is variable. Favorable. Epilepsy Foundation reports that 56% of adults with epilepsy have uncontrolled seizures. Of the 90% of patients taking anti-epileptic drugs, only 44% have controlled seizures. The prevalence of seizures and seizure control increases with low family income. Implications. Due to the possibility of severe injury, accidents, or embarrassment, patients who experience recurrent seizures may avoid or be legally restricted from certain activities, and these may include vocation, occupations that involve use of machinery or require physical activity, licenses, certain licenses such as driver's license may be restricted until the patient is seizure-free, independent living, assisted living may be advised. Clinical manifestations, precipitating factors, and trigger signs. The patient or caregiver can provide helpful information for, to prepare dental personnel in the management of an emergency. Triggers may occur frequently or in response to specific stimuli. The dental hygienist should be prepared to eliminate or minimize these stimuli. Factors that may, that may precipitate a seizure include flashing, bright lights or noises, stressor, apprehension, fatigue, sleep deprivation, a specific time of the day, alcohol or drug use, fever, not eating resulting in, blow, in low blood sugar, non-compliance with anti-seizure medications, menstruation, physical ex exercise, and physical trauma. Aura. An aura can be described as a sensory stimulus, a visual disturbance, numbness, tingling, twitching, or stiffness of muscles. Not all patients have warning signs or auras before a seizure. A patient experiencing a warning may seek a safe place to sit or lie down. In the dental environment, the patient may inform the personnel so dental procedures can be terminated and preparations can be made. Prevention of seizure injuries. 
All patients may experience more than one type of seizure. The primary method to control and prevent seizures is through anti-epileptic drugs, AEDs. The injuries associated with seizures may be prevented through modifications of behaviors. Primary prevention of seizure injuries focus on medication compliance, avoiding brain, brain injury through the use of protective measures such as helmets and mouth guards. Secondary prevention includes early detection, recognition, and preparation of the seizure. Tertiary prevention compromises training and education strategies for patients, teachers, caregivers, and healthcare practitioners. The treatment, medication. AEDs are the primary method used to prevent and control seizures. Choices. Patients may be placed on one or, or a combination of AEDs. Choice of therapy is aligned to the type of seizure and desired side effect or the elimination of undesirable side effects. Side effects. Each medication has side effects a patient may experience to a varying degree. It is imperative for patients to follow directions for the use of anti-seizure medications from their primary caregiver. Side effects may include allergic reaction rash, fatigue, dizziness, drowsiness, weakness, ataxia, headache, slurred speech, blurred vision, nausea, vomiting, memory loss, behavioral and cognitive deficits, damage to the pancreas, liver, interactions of medications processed in the liver, leukopenia, delayed healing and infection, thrombocytopenia or decreased platelet aggregation, increased bleeding, petechiae, osteoporosis, increase or unknown risk of birth defects, Hirsutism, hypertrichosis or excessive hair growth, gingival hyperplasia, gingival enlargement is the most common with phenytoin, numerous drug interactions including other AEDs, acetaminophen, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, erythromycins, and reduction in the efficacy of oral contraceptives. Elderly and children. Both age groups are more sensitive to side effects such as weakness, unsteadiness, and cognitive alterations. Elderly are more likely to be on other medications with possible drug interactions and may forget to take medications. Precaution, herbal supplements. Certain over-the-counter herbal supplements are used as self-medications to prevent seizures. These supplements may interfere with the prescribed AED. Herbal supplements have not been shown to effectively treat epileptic seizures and may make seizures worse. Patients are asked to inform their primary care provider and dental team when using alternative forms of medication. Herbal supplements such as ginkgo biloba, St. John's wort, and some essential oils may also affect dental treatment, for example, causing increased bleeding. Surgery. A variety of surgical interventions are available and indicated when epilepsy is refractory to traditional AED therapy. Surgical intervention has become more precise through advances in identifying the epileptogenic area with magnetic renaissance imaging, tomography, electroencephalographic studies, neuropsychological testing, and other analysis. Surgical options include lobe section of the epileptic epileptogenic area of the brain. If total resection leads to unacceptable deficits, multiple sub peel transactions, which are series of small parallel slices are removed. Gamma knife radiosurgery involves delivery of a focused dose of radiation to the epileptogenic area of the brain. This technique reduces the risk of infection, bleeding, and hospitalization. Vagus nerve stimulation utilizes a pacemaker-like device to deliver signals to the vagus nerve known to reduce seizure activity without adverse effects to the patient. Ketogenic diet. The goal of the ketogenic diet is to reduce fat metabolism through ketosis by maintaining a diet high in fat and low in carbohydrates. The diet has been shown to be effective treatment for patients with epilepsy, particularly children. Oral findings. Epilepsy in itself produces no oral changes. Specific oral changes are related to side effects of the AEDs, oral accidents during the seizure, and side effects of the epilepsy, such as depression leading to poor oral hygiene and neglect. The effects of accidents with seizures, scars of lips and tongues. Oral tissues, particularly tongue, cheek, or lip, may be bitten. Scars may be observed during the extraoral intraoral examination. Cause may be differentiated from other types of healed wounds. Fractured teeth. Clenching and bruxing may be forceful enough to fracture teeth. Fractured teeth may be sharp, lacerate tissue and need to be smoothed or restored. Fractures may extend into the pulp or of the tooth, allowing bacterial infection and requiring root canal therapy or extraction.
Gingival overgrowth, gingival hyperplasia. Gingival overgrowth occurs in 25 to 50% of persons using phenytoin for treatment. Treat phenytoin and other anti-seizure drugs have been used in the treatment of other conditions besides epilepsy, including stuttering, headaches, neuromuscular disturbances, and cardiac conditions. Therefore, there are these uh, their use should not lead to the assumption that patients has epilepsy. Other anti-seizure drugs can induce gingival overgrowth, but less frequently. Other terms for gingival enlargement and the use of phenytoin may be referred to as dilantin hyperplasia. Diphenyl high dant dantanoid include induced hyperplasia. Diphenylin dantoin gingival hyperplasia. Dilantin induced gingival fibrosis and phenytoin induced hyperplasia. Mechanisms. Phenytoin may, be, may cause fibroblasts and osteoblasts to deposit extra excessive extracellular matrix causing gingival overgrowth. Tissue color and texture are generally within normal limits with interdental papilla taking on a lobular shape. Local irritants such as biofilm, faulty restorations, or ill-fitting appliances cause a more exaggerated tissue response. Meticulous oral hygiene has been found to reduce the occurrence and severity of gingival overgrowth. The occurrence. Incidence is greater in younger patients just beginning drug therapy. The gingiva may start to enlarge within a few weeks or even after a few years following initial administration of drug therapy. The size of the dose and length of treatment are not necessarily factors in the incidence of nature of the gingival enlargement. The anterior gingiva are more likely affected than posterior and the maxillary more than the mandibular arch. Facial and proximal areas are more affected than lingual and palatal areas. Although rare, an overgrowth of tissue may occur in an edentulous area. This is usually associated with trauma, irritation from a denture, the presence of retained roots, or uninterrupted teeth. Overgrowth of tissue surrounding dental implants may occur. The effects. Control of dental biofilm may be a problem. May affect mastication. May alter tooth eruption. May interfere with speech. May cause serious aesthetic concerns. Tissue characteristics, early clinical features, overgrowth appears as a painful enlargement of interdental papilla with signs of inflammation. Eventually, the tissue becomes fibrotic, pink, and stippled with a mulberry or cauliflower-like appearance. Advanced lesion. Tissue increases in size, extends to include the marginal gingiva, and covers a large portion of the anatomic crown. Cleft-like grooves may occur between the lobes. Severe lesion. Large bulbous gingiva may cover the enamel, tend to wedge the teeth apart, and interfere with mastication and oral self-care. Microscopic appearance. During therapy, phenytoin is present in the saliva, blood, gingival sulcus fluid, and dental biofilm. Number of fibroblasts and the amount of collagen in connective tissue increase. Stratified squamous epithelium is thick with long reet ridges. Inflammatory cells are great, greatest abundance near the base of the socket pockets. Complicating factors, dental biofilm. Biofilm appears to be the most significant determinant in the severity of phenytoin-induced gingival enlargement. Adequate biofilm control, particularly if started prior to the administration of phenytoin, helps control the extent of the gingival overgrowth. Contributing factors, mouth breathing, overhanging and defective restorations, malocclusion, large carious lesions, calculus and biofilm retention encourages gingival overgrowth. Treatment should include removal of contributing factors by recontouring overhangs, placing or replacing restorations, effective biofilm and calculus removal. The treatment. There are varying ways to treat gingival enlargement based on the medication used and clinical presentation of lesions. Change in, si in seizure medication. Collaboration with the primary care physician should be integrated into the treatment plan. Change to a different drug with a lower chance of causal gingival enlargement. Medication change should be just prior to a surgical removal procedure. Non-surgical treatment. Periodontal debridement along with strict biofilm control may help early lesion regress. Where the tissue has become fibrotic, shrinkage cannot be expected. Initiate prevention of biofilm control prior to or simultaneously with initial administration of an antileptic medication. The use of 0.12% chlorhexidine gluconate rinses is linked to positive outcomes to prevent return of gingival enlargement caused by anti-seizure medications. Surgical removal. 
Gingivectomy, a surgical procedure used for tissue removal when a sufficient band of, of attached gingiva exists. A periodontal flap procedure may be the choice for healing and aesthetics. Prior to surgery, a regulated program of biofilm control is introduced and continued after surgery. Surgical dressings have been removed. General health has special significance, and oral health contributes to general health. Meticulous oral hygiene is required to minimize gingival overgrowth. Differential diagnosis of medications causing gingival enlargement. Numerous medications may cause gingival enlargement, including anti-seizure medications, especially phenytoin, and to a lesser extent, euthyxamide, valproic acid, and primidone. Calcium channel blockers used for treatment of hypertension, such as nifedipine, veripamol, and dilatinazine. Immunosuppressant cyclosporine used frequently with organ transplants. Tarcolosimus may be a substitute with less occurrence of gingival overgrowth. Dental hygiene care. The majority of patients with epilepsy or a history of seizures can and need to receive the same level of dental care as the general population. Interprofessional collaboration plays an important role in the development of the dental hygiene care plan. The patient with a seizure disorder may undergo the care of other specialists, including a neurologist, social worker, and primary care physician. The patient history. Most patients with epilepsy have regular thorough medical examinations. Contact with the primary care provider when the patient or caregiver is unable to provide needed information is non-compliant. If seizure activity has increased or changed, or if treatment for epilepsy is impacting the patient's oral health. Patients with autism may present with social communication and behavioral problems in addition to seizure disturbances. A well-controlled patient with epilepsy may still be at risk to have a seizure. For seizure-prone patients, advising wearing medical alert jewelry. Information to obtain. Pre uh, patient approach. Provide a calm, reassuring atmosphere and treat the patient with empathy. Use a motivational interviewing approach to a patient education, enabling patients to be partners in the decision-making process. Encourage self-expression, particularly if the patient tends to be quiet and withdrawn or has a narrow range of interest. Recognize possible impairment of memory. Help the patient develop an interest. Medication used for treatment of seizures may make the patient drowsy and have chronic illness suffers, tend to have more frequent health issues that interfere with the appointment. Be understanding. Care plan. Instrumentation. Patients should be considered an integral part in their daily oral health maintenance. All patients need to be instructed and motivated. Complete removal of all deposits on the teeth and thorough non-surgical periodontal therapy is essential. Prior to in the start of phenytoin therapy, a rigorous biofilm control program and complete periodontal debridement are needed in preparation for phenytoin therapy. The patient and caregiver should be guided in oral hygiene maintenance, emphasizing preventing or minimizing gingival overgrowth with effective biofilm management. Initial appointment series for patients treated with phenytoin. Weekly appointments are complete, biofilm control instruction, and debridement are placed in the following objectives. Slight or mild gingival overgrowth, non-surgical treatment, including frequent thorough debridement, may lead to tissue reduction provided the patient maintains daily biofilm control. Frequent continuing care appointments can contribute to more appealing aesthetics, function, and comfort within with minimum periodontal involvement. Moderate gingival overgrowth after the initial series of biofilm instruction and debridement, reevaluation of the gingival tissue will determine whether further treatment is needed. Severe fibrotic overgrowth. Initial non-surgical periodontal therapy and biofilm controls should be provided in preparation for surgical uh, tissue removal. Continuing care intervals. Frequent appointments on one, two, or three month, month intervals. Care plan prevention, daily biofilm removal and fluoride therapy, the use of pit and fissure sealants and dietary control. Emergency care. Prevent the injury and accidents related to the oral structure, such as tongue bite, broken or dis dilas dislocated teeth, dislocated or fractured jaw, broken, fixed, or removable dentures, and ensure adequate ventilation. Differential diagnosis of the seizure. Syncope, migraine headache, transient ischemic attack, cerebral accident, cerebral vascular accident or stroke, sleep disorders such as narcolepsy, movement disorders such as dyskinesia, common for example in patients with a cerebral palsy or multiple sclerosis, overdose of local anesthetic, hypoglycemia, or insulin overdose in a patient with diabetes, and hyperventilation. Preparation for the appointment. Place emergency materials in a convenient location, have the patient remove dentures for the duration of the appointment, provide a calm and reassuring atmosphere, and have other dental personnel available in case of an emergency. 
emergency procedure. Make no attempt to stop the convulsion or restrain the patient. Terminate the clinical procedure and call for assistance. Protect the patient from injury. Position patient, lower chair and tilt to spine, raise feet. Keep patient from falling out of the dental chair. Push aside sharp objects, movable equipment and instrument tray. Loosen tight bell, tight belts, collars, and neckties. Do not place or force anything between the teeth. Establish airway. Check for breathing obstruction. Provide basic life support when indicated. Place on the side recovery position. Use high-speed suction with a wipe tip to remove vomit. Do not put it in the mouth. Just suction it from the side of the mouth. Monitor vital signs. Stay beside the patient to prevent personal injury and reassure. Check for the level of consciousness and determine if emergency medical assistance is required. If a seizure is still occurring or has reoccurred within five minutes, activate emergency medical system. post ectal phase. Document the emergency situation and allow the patient to rest. Talk to the patient in a quiet, reassuring tone. Check oral cavity for trauma to the teeth and tissue. Palliative care can be administered. When a tooth is broken, the piece must be located so aspiration can be prevented. With patient's con consent, contact the patient's family, friend to accompany the patient. Status epileptus. Status epileptus is when a seizure lasts longer than five minutes or when the seizure occurs close together without recovery. There are two types, convulsive and non-convulsive. Prolonged seizure may result in brain injury and long-term morbidity of death or death. Emergency medical assistance is notified immediately and the patient is transported to an emergency department. Basic life support is provided if necessary. Documentation. Complete health history, vital signs, radiographs, findings of extra and intraoral examination, periodontal history charting and tissue description, dental caries history charting, and current demineralization and carious lesions. Progress notes for each appointment with abbreviated history and current clinical findings. Information about the type of seizure the treatment patient is receiving and what steps to take in an event of an emergency.